Good day. My name is Deline Sims, and I am your host for this event. Thank you all for joining us as we celebrate the Story Arts Center's 25th anniversary. A warm welcome to everyone here and to those joining us by live stream, especially our students at Daniel Spectrum and Front Center. People are celebrating with us across the city and beyond. So today we're going to use the hashtag SAC25 for everyone to participate and follow along with the celebration. Now, to get things started, I would like to call upon Centennial College President and CEO, Craig Stevenson, to say a few words to mark this occasion. Good morning, or is it good afternoon? Good morning, I think, by five minutes. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for the introduction. Um, I wanted you to thank you, I, first of all, I want to thank you for joining us to mark the 25th anniversary of our Story Arts Centre. I'm delighted that you're here today celebrating our storied past and the incredible legacy of the faculty, staff and students who've made this campus a unique place to learn and to work for the past quarter of a century. And when you think about a quarter of a century, you think of a journey where people, ideas and actions have moved us from A to B to C and beyond. So this is definitely worth celebrating, a journey worth celebrating, and only one possible because of influencers, change makers, and facilitators. And so to that end, I want to actually begin by saying thank you and sharing my gratitude to the people who've made this event possible and to all of those who've moved us forward over the last 25 years. The school's 25th anniversary planning committee was, is comprised of faculty, support staff and management volunteers, as well as the Story Arts Centre's CCSI campus VP. They've all worked incredibly hard to get together today to ensure we've got some wonderful festivities and celebrations to enjoy. Could all the people on the cloud Let's start that one again. Can all the people on the planning committee please show yourselves, identify yourselves in some way? Where are you? Give those people a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would also like this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to one of the most dedicated, passionate, and creative facilitators and influencers that I know Dean Nate Horowitz, who I'm sure you'll agree when I say has been a visionary force behind the Story Arts Centre for the past 25 years. Nate, from the bottom of my heart and then some, thank you. Thank you for your outstanding leadership for your stewardship of this architectural gem and for your unwavering commitment to nurturing the next generation of storytellers here at Centennial. And I'd also, if I may, like to say thank you to another influencer at this institution, our former president, Anne Buller. Can Anne please stand? I'm so pleased Anne is with us today, as Anne has been, along with Nate, a major force behind this institution and behind the Story Arts Centre. And I know Nate nor Anne have done it alone, and they would be the first to say that it's all been about teams, about the faculty, about the staff, the administrators, and our student leaders, who've played an equally important role in influencing and shaping what we see today. And since we're amongst friends, I think it's safe for me to say that I have a bit of a soft spot for the Story Arts Centre. But don't share that out loud. I have four other campuses that I need to treat equally. But I do have a soft spot. I've always been drawn to the centre's distinct vibe, its friendliness, so many welcoming and smiling faces this morning. 
a welcoming atmosphere. And there's a unique energy here that is absolutely palpable as soon as you set foot on the campus. And whether you're here at 6 o'clock in the morning or 10 o'clock at night, and I've been here at both those times, the centre is always, always buzzing with activity, with students editing films, painting, sculpturing, writing, working on group projects, and often playing the, the baby grand piano at the back there. Even someone like me, I can't draw, I don't know one music note from another, and I have a very uncoordinated dance style. You do not want to see me dance. But even me, with all my sort of artistic restrictions, if you will, still, I still walk away from this campus feeling creatively renewed, inspired, and generally moved, genuinely moved by what I visually sense and hear at the Story Arts Centre. Indeed, I actually recently acquired a lovely piece of artwork from one of our students, Daria Silver. Is Daria in the audience today? Daria's there. Yes, Daria, I bought a, a piece of her art called Serenity Amid Chaos. The title of the piece spoke to me um, because, you know, as you can appreciate, I'm a new president and, and often life can feel a tad chaotic and more than a little hectic at times. So now I proudly have Daria's uh, piece artwork in my main room of the house to promote a moment to sit, to relax and to breathe and to bring a sense of serenity and calm. And that's what happens when I come here. I get that sense of serenity and calm. This is such a refreshing and inspiring place to be. So I couldn't be happier than I am right now to be celebrating the 25th anniversary with you. And if these walls, if these walls could talk, what a story they would tell. You may not know this, but this building was originally constructed as the Toronto Teachers College. This modernist masterpiece was designed by legendary architect Peter Dickinson between 1953 and about 1954. He was born like myself in England, though from southern England in Suffolk, and he brought a bold vision and a mid-century modern style to post-war Toronto in the 1950s. Before his untimely death, just before his 36th birthday, Dickinson designed over 150 buildings, including several Toronto landmarks like the Story Arts, uh, sorry, the Sony Centre of the Performing Arts, you'll know that one, and the Inn at the Park, which is now sadly being demolished, as well as several public schools and educational facilities across Ontario, including this very building. Dickinson was 26 years old when he designed this building, and you will not be surprised to hear that as a result, he received Canada's prestigious Massey Medal for Architecture. And in fact, that was one of five that Dickinson earned over the course of his short but highly prolific career. This youthful, charismatic, forward-thinking outsider and disruptor changed the landscape of this city and helped to push Toronto in the mod into the modern 20th century. So from its very creation, this space in which we learn, in which we work, and in which we create was arguably intended to nurture creative, visionary, and disruptive thoughts and words and deeds. Indeed, drawing in natural light, housing an interior courtyard complete with reflecting pool and designed on an intimate scale, you can't help but feel the building encourages contemplation, collaboration, and dare I say, a sense of playfulness, a warm and inviting place. It is ideally suited to teaching, learning, experiment, experimentation, and thinking outside of the box. This building was acquired by Centennial in 1978, the East York campus, and it was originally intended for business and continu continuing education programs. But when those programs moved elsewhere in the 1980s, our very own Dean Horowitz put forward a very bold proposal 
to transform the building into a digital media campus for our advertising, corporate communications, journalism, broadcasting and book and magazine publishing students. The campus would subsequently undergo a meticulous restoration and renewal under the direction of award-winning architect Alar Congats. As many of you know, during this interim period, the building had a star turn. Do you remember Degrassi High? It was actually filmed here. And so many people have grown up watching that show and they come here and they have a strong sense of familiarity and nostalgia when they walk in and through these halls. And when this building became the Bell Centre for Creative Communications, it was in 1995, a very different time. Some of you may remember at that time the release of Pixar's first feature film. Do you know which one that was? Toy Story. Exactly, Toy Story. The first entirely computer animated feature. At that time, I, I think we were all still doing that, the VHS films that we were renting from blockbusters. We listened to music on CDs, if you were quite advanced, like, if you were like me, you were still listening to tapes. And then we'd use film in our cameras. It was only six years earlier that the Tim Berners-Lee uh, Berners had invented the World Wide Web, just six years earlier. The social media landscape that we're so immersed in today was non-existent. The third industrial revolution, a digital revolution, was just about to take hold, and the change continues to unfold to this day at what often feels like breakneck speed, revolutionizing how we work and live, consume media and communicate and connect with one another. Consider the fact that it took 50 years for the telephone to reach 50 million users. Twitter reached 50 million users in two years. These sweeping changes have had huge implications for print and broadcast journalism, film, television, music, publishing and the arts in general, radically transforming the career paths our students are pursuing here at the Story Arts Centre. The one constant, the one constant amid all this change has been the need to tell stories effectively, honestly, and in creative and compelling ways. In 2015, the Centre for Creative Communications was renamed the Story Arts Centre, reflecting that very mission and to describe what every programme in the School of Communications, Media, Arts and Design does, from journalism to dance to animation to publishing to interactive man media management, storytelling is the heartbeat of this school and this campus and is at the core of everything we do. The school now has 1,600 students studying at this campus and at three other learning sites for the performing arts. We, you, not we, you have grown to 36 programmes, including a four-year honours degree in public relations management and two joint programmes with the University of Toronto Scarborough in journalism and new media. The breadth of your offerings continues to expand with another joint programme with UTSC in music, which is in the works. You have the highest student satisfaction rate and the highest employment rate among similar programmes in the GTA colleges. And an it's such an incredible achievement. I think that's worthy of a round of applause. Well done. Thank you to everybody. Your talented alumni are making waves across many disciplines. Over the past several years, students and graduates have had their films featured in festivals across the continent and in Europe. In 2018, we were absolutely over the moon when two of our graduates received Academy Awards for their modelling and animation work on the films Blade Runner 2049 and The Shape of Water, to name but a couple of our awards. Our students also graduate with a firm grasp of global citizenship principles and a strong sense of social responsibility, making them well equipped to navigate an interconnected and rapidly changing world and address the complex issues facing these industries today. 
Story arts graduates are filmmakers and producers who promote equity and diversity on set. They are versatile, culturally aware dancers, choreographers, musicians and performers. They are advertising account managers who design inclusive, thought-provoking ad campaigns. They are journalists who tell stories that matter and to seek to amplify the voices of those who are not being heard. The school's unique collaborative and interdisciplinary approach further enriches students' learning and, stim and simulates the experience of working with the cultural industries. Your innovative story, arts work, uh, story Works course, for example, provides opportunities for students to work with real-world clients, managing actual projects, challenges and deadlines. StoryWorks is now part of almost every programme, one of many innovative experiential learning opportunities that you offer here. And earlier today, I was actually very proud to be part of a short segment for the face-to-face -face Feb campaign. 29 days of building human connection. Who's involved in that campaign in the room? A number of you here. Yes, it, that, that's a, a collaboration between our corporate communications and public relations students and the general project. For this engaging campaign, students are using social media to address a pressing issue that affects us all, especially in the digital age. Loneliness and social isolation that face-to-face -face contact is still very, very important. And thank you for getting engaged in such an important project. The Story Arts Centre has become an East End institution with strong ties to the Danforth area, providing students with unique community engagement opportunities. Students promote East End businesses and report on local issues through publications such as the On the Danforth magazine, and the Toronto Observer. The journal features online video documentaries, lifestyle pieces and podcasts created by the, tele the television students in their courses. In addition, the campus has a booth at the taste of the Danforth Food Festival with over 1.5 million visitors every August. And this past fall, I attended the Toronto Danforth election the, the debate that was hosted here at the campus, which was entirely organised by the Story Arts Centre students. Which students were involved in that debate? No, anybody here that was involved? Well, that was absolutely spectacular. Uh, very well done. In the weeks leading up to that debate, students from several disciplines, including public relations, journalism, broadcasting, communications, and media and graphic design, worked in close collaboration to organise this very important community event. From planning, promoting and managing the debate to live streaming, blogging, tweeting and minute by minute reporting on the proceedings. Students worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make the debate a success, enabling members of the community to ask local candidates questions, better understand candidates' platforms and positions, and make informed decisions at the ballot box. I was so very proud of all those students involved. And students at the Story Arts Centre are trained to hit the ground running but you also provide them with tools and supports that they need to be successful. They are part of an encouraging, close-knit community here, surrounded by helpful peers and dedicated faculty support staff, counsellors, librarians and administrators. Can you please give the staff of the Story Arts Centre a huge round of applause? This, this support system is vital when you're encouraging students to be bold, to try new things, to challenge themselves and to take risks with their creative work. And I think it's very fitting that one of the Dean's Awards presented to Story Arts Centre students is in fact the Peter Dickinson Award, which recognises those who are willing to take re risks. What a beautiful tribute to this building's creator. Echoing Dean Horowitz's reflections in a Globe and Mail article on the building's history, I do think Dickinson would feel very much at home here. 
In closing, as I started, I would like to pay tribute to all of you, the people of the Story Arts Centre. The faculty and staff at this campus have kept our students ahead of the curve and you continue to evolve and adapt to meet the needs of a rapidly changing media landscape. Our talented students and alumni who make us so incredibly proud have established our reputation for excellence across many creative industries and disciplines, breaking new ground for future graduates. For the past quarter of a century, the people who work, teach and study at the campus have kept the Dickinsonian spirit alive and well, breathing new life into this beautiful building with their energy, their creativity and their passion for storytelling. We are here today because of you all. We have much to be proud of and even more to look forward in the years to come. Happy 25th anniversary. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. I now invite Centennial's Vice President Academic and Chief Learning Officer, Marilyn Harry, to say a few words. Thanks so much and good afternoon everyone on this happy, happy occasion. Um, I have a question. Who here has ever gone apartment hunting or house hunting? Like who is not raising their hand? I want to know where you're living, that it was just like, okay, the ones that are living at home, I guess, with their parents. Um, well, I don't know. If you're like me, the minute that you enter a space, do you find that you know that it's the one? Kind of like a Tinder date. Oh, wait, okay, that was another speech. Um, but you know it's the one that, uh, like visual art or performance or media or design, one of the key aims of architecture is to evoke emotion. And so, just like the house that I've lived in since 1999, the minute that I set foot in the Story Arts Center, I knew that this place was incredibly special. This modernist jewel, is a perfect setting for the extraordinary stories the Centennial students and faculty and staff and administrators share and create. Um, just think about the creative, talented, inspired team of faculty, of our students, of our community. The Globe and Mail article from 2018 that Dr. Stevenson referenced was basically a love letter to the Story Arts Center and also to Peter Dickinson. And I, I love the quote about Peter Dickinson described as the British expat architect who chain smoked and partied his way into the hearts of the post-war city before his untimely death in 1961. Now, I'm not sure how Mr. Dickinson would feel about this being a smoke-free campus, but I have no doubt that he would fully approve that he would love the journey that this extraordinary building has been on for the last 25 years under the outstanding leadership of Dean Nate Horowitz. So, okay, this is the definition of a storied building. And beautiful as it is, as Craig Stevenson said, it's the people. It's what happens inside that really matters. This building is a beautiful architectural jewel, but it's really a container for the amazing, beautiful people and the stories that we tell and the magic that we weave. And so I was trying to imagine what 25 years of storytelling would be and how could we begin to quantify it? Because that's what I like to, like I try to, I want to know like how much, like how many stories. And so here's my attempt at a conservative estimate. And those of you who have a problem with my methodology, we can discuss at the reception <laughs> afterwards. It may be flawed. Um, but let's assume, and I did check with enrollment services on this, that roughly 3,000 students per whole academic year on campus and off campus are enrolled. Um, multiplied by approximately eight courses, could be more, right, four or five per semester, and we'll say conservatively two semesters, even though some may come for three, and each course probably requires students, like, would you say three assignments would be about right per course? 
Okay, not even close. Could be 10 assignments. I said it was a conservative estimate. Everyone's like, no, this is the wrong methodology. Okay, so conservative estimate. So by my calculation, admittedly flawed, that would come to 72,000 stories per year multiplied by 25 years equals 1.8 million stories. And that's just the students. And you factor in the equally compelling and inspiring and thought-provoking and informative and entertaining and transformational stories of the faculty, the staff, the program advisory committee members, our partners, and the cumulative impact of all of those stories in the last quarter century is absolutely extraordinary. And not to mention Anthony Harrison's amazing comic book, one perfect memor memory of this institution. I guess we have to say that we must keep it in its collector's packet because it will be very valuable. Anniversaries are meaningful because we celebrate the past and at the same time we look towards the future. So here's to Mr. Dickinson's legacy, to Dean Horowitz's leadership, and to the leadership of the management, the faculty, the staff, and the students in this incredible school. And extra special thanks to the 25th Anniversary Volunteer Committee, um, Vice President for Story Arts Center, Jessima Hewitt Vassell, and thank you to each of you for sharing your gifts with our community and with one another every single day. Here's to all of the stories still to be written. Happy anniversary. Thank you, Marilyn. And last, but certainly not least, Let's welcome our Dean, Nate Horowitz, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so you've heard from our president, Craig Stevenson, our vice president, academic chief learning officer, Marilyn Harry. They've been very, very supportive. Also, I want to recognize the support we've had from former President Ann Buller, tremendous support for our campus. Tylan Tatley, who's also on the ex executive of the college. Uh, I want to thank you both. And of course, Craig and, and Marilyn, very supportive. And you can't, we can't do our work on stories without their support. I want, to, I want to also thank the amazing students and faculty here and staff. This is like a family, and we believe we are. We have family invites. We uh, try to resolve those, and, and uh, we really are about a family feeling. So I want to start with a question because you've heard story, 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 and it's very important to understand that we're really talking about a building and it's 25th anniversary, a wonderful building, but it's about the stories in here. Mary, Marilyn talked about 1.8 million stories. How many of you woke up this morning, how many of you woke up this morning with a story in your head about this, this your schooling, your work, part-time jobs, your family, your relationships. Anybody wake up with something going on about a story? Everybody did. If you didn't wake up with a story, I don't think you're awake. We all wake up. And that's the thing about storytelling is what makes us human. It is what makes us human. We have food, shelter, and storytelling. Storytelling allows us to understand those people over in that village next to us. Storytelling allows us to have peace or not. Storytelling is in, endemic to humanity since its beginnings. We all carry storytelling in our DNA. Do you notice when you get together with your friends, what are you doing? You're telling stories. My day today. My, my, my love today, the food I ate today, the work I did three weeks ago, the results I got. It's story, and it's always about story. So stories had a major impact on everything we do. We storytellers are truth tellers. How many of you consider yourself a truth teller? Anybody? 
few people, you're all truth tellers. We're advocates and we're activists and we do it through story. We convince others, we change societies and cultures and religion through story. We make it easier for people to understand their own lives and others. And sometimes we are considered to be loco, which, if you know his Spanish, crazy. Because storytellers are sometimes put to the side. They're not part of the regular plan. The last 25 years have seen the storytellers here learn and grow as storytellers. And then grow some more as graduates of story in, in storytelling. Do you know how many... Marilyn talked about 1.8 stories in the last 25 years. How many of those people who graduated in those 25 years have grown as storytellers and have impacted in major ways our cultures, our politics, our religion, ourselves? Whether we do it through music and dance, or we do it through writing and public relations, and interactive media, and publishing, and television, and you name it, animation, game. We're telling stories, and those stories matter to us. We live in stories. Our heads are full of stories. We draw them out as we need them for our daily existence and for our inspiration. So this building is focused on that. That's why we're celebrating today. It's wonderful to have the celebration, but that's what we're about. And we're about the professional story. We're about professionalism in making stories and in hearing stories. Listening is very important if you're a storyteller, as much as it is the creation of the story. We want to celebrate you as storytellers, the students. It's critical that we, the faculty, the staff, management, we all work together to help you become future storytellers. The excellent faculty and staff understand professional storytelling and the possibilities of the mashup of different stories. It's not just stories along their lanes, it's stories crossing lanes. The emergence of stories will always drive and impact humanity. You're at the forefront of this. You're at the forefront as long as humanity exists. You're at the forefront. And what's the next 25 years going to look like? What is the next 25 years going to look like? That's more critical than even where we've been. Because change is constant. It's been constant for a long time. And the stories and what they mean. But there are stories in your lives, if you think about it, that are thousands of years old. Thousands of year old stories in your lives. And they're still impacting you. They're affecting you in major ways. Affecting you emotionally purely intellectually, but they're affecting you. So old stories don't go away. They're still in us. They're in our DNA. I want to also mention two people who were here at the beginning when we moved in, and there were several, actually. Um, that was Mary Snowblin, who's faculty. She's right there. And there was a dean called Walter Stewart, who got, should get a lot of credit for the work he did here, and the director of this center. I was faculty at the time. And yeah, I did write the report. Uh, I wanted to write a report in 1988 about what we could be, what this place could be. But the person, his name is John King, and he had a major role in this, in this building and in who we are today. So I want to give homage to those people. I also want to thank the team. You've heard from Marilyn and from Craig about the team. It's a small team of volunteers, faculty, support staff, and management who put this together. So here goes. Phil Alvis, is he here? Right here, great. Tony Cleave, He's upstairs. Scott Hosmer. Scott, Scott's also the chair of this 25th anniversary. He's done a fantastic job. Jillian Edwards. Sanjana Khan.
From Progress, Jeanette Loban. <laughs> Feng Nguyen, she couldn't be here, uh, but she'll be back in another few weeks. Feng is amazing. <laughs> Patrick Robinson, who's right now with his students at uh, Daniel Spectrum, the theater students. And I hope watching this, hope you're watching this, Patrick, on the live stream. Lohan, uh, Lohan made sure that everything went well and he got us the cupcakes. And I'm glad it says 25 on it instead of some other baker using five or something else. Preeti Sharma. Our Vice President of CCSAI at this campus, Jasima Hewitt Vassell. Is Jasima here? Yeah. And, of course, Barry Waite. One of our graduates is here, he's right back here, Kunle. Kunle goes by one name, a musician, eh? And Kunle was an international student when he studied here in the music industry and performance program. Kunle came from Nigeria. He's won a number of international awards. He's been the musician. Maybe he can talk a little bit later about his experiences here. Thank you, Kunle. And by the way, I hope everybody picked up the comic book. Is Anthony Harrison here? He said he was going to be here, but uh, Anthony is a fine arts teacher, and Anthony, uh, we went to Anthony, we wanted a comic book, an adult comic book. My parents would laugh at that statement, adult comic book. We wanted a comic book to tell the story about the students here and their interaction with faculty and, every, and each other. And Anthony did a fantastic job, and please pick up a copy. It's a collector's item now. We're declaring it so, and I think the UN will soon recognize it. And it is an amazing comic book. Great narrative. Thank you, Anthony. Also want to thank Professor Derek Lee. Is Derek here? Derek did the wonderful poster for the 25 years. Derek is a well-known international illustrator and came up with something that captures the past and the future of storytelling at this campus. So just around the corner, over here, you'll see a large sheet. Please use the markers, draw or write what you think you'll be doing in storytelling 25 years from now. It's going to go into a time capsule. And Malcolm Kelly and I agree that we'll be back. 86, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> We'll be back to look at that in 25 years of what you think you'll be doing in storytelling 25 years from now, because you're the future. So, having said that, I want to, may your stories always inspire us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nate, for those kind words. And thanks again to Craig and Marilyn for the recognition. Now, here we are. It is my distinct pleasure to introduce music, industry, arts, and performance graduate, Kunle. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, you know, the first thing that sold me about this place was the fact that I had a career in engineering and I never met the dean of my campus in my entire three years study. But I, get, I got to Centennial College and in one week I already said hello to Nate. He actually came and said, hey, hello. And yeah, that was something. And the second one also was when I was applying to the college. Jesse was just so fast at responding to emails. I was like, okay. 
That's another selling point. Um, okay. All right. So, is the countdown ready? Yep. All right. With a round of applause and a scream or a yell, whatever you can do, or a gr whatever you can do, let's just w welcome 25 years of um, Centennial College in existence. Ready? Three, two, one. We don't have to go the three sister degrees But now it's time to go the 180 We don't have to climb the highest mountains Cause all you're looking for is within you Open your heart, soft your mind, your ears and mine As I sing this song Open your heart, soft your mind, your ears and mind As I, I sing, I shall song da 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 ba da da ba ba da de ba da da ba ba da de I'll be waiting I'll be waiting ba da da ba ba da de de ba da da ba ba da de I'll be waiting for you, for you, for you, for you, for you. We still live in yesterday. Many today they waste away, but nevertheless it's never late. So those times have changed. I thought you knew that this world would ever ever wait for you. The world has gone past times of fighting. So drop your guns and end your sword and let us live all as one. We only need love and understanding. So drop your guns and your sword and let us live all as one. I'll be waiting, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting, I'll be waiting. I'll be Can we sing together if you don't mind? I'll be waiting, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting. I'm only hearing my voice. You want to try again? Oh. I'll be waiting, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting for you, for you. One more time, yeah. I'll be waiting, I'll be waiting. I'll be waiting. Thank you so much. Um, since I'm older than Centennial College, no, not Centennial College, Story at Campus. <laughs> I turned 33 today, so I'm celebrating. And um, yep. Um, I would like to do a song that reminds me of home.
and it's called Let's Play. I woke up this morning feeling so nice I wonder how, I wonder why I do It's been a while I felt like this My mother told me what we did last night We were out in the cold The coldest time of the night Playing hide and seek Singing late night songs the moon is up above us, staring at me tonight. Let's make a night to remember. let the moon is up above in the sky. the moon is up above in the sky. So, 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 I'm not gonna lie that I can't even find words to explain how coming to Centennial College has helped me in a lot of ways, but the first evidence of it was when I was caught on a record in Berlin, and I spent just a week there to be able, when I was able to, you know, make five songs to the point where I felt satisfied. And I was thinking, like, I tried to make one song before I came to this place. It took me, like, months, and I still don't even understand how it worked. But as a result of, you know, coming here and learning all the languages that I need to express myself, it just made it so easy. But one of my experiences coming to Canada that um, got me to write the song I'm about to play now is mental health. And um, I remember a week into being in this campus, I saw a table here. And in my opinion, I was thinking, wow, that's a word of excellence. So I'm like, I have to be here. But then I realized it was the number of people who lost the battle to mental health during that, I mean, years before or whatever, yeah. So it got me and I, decided to join the campaign like I would always use my music wherever I am to let people know that no matter what you're going through there's always a support system for you all you just got to do is reach out so I want to take this moment so you know let us join together and just acknowledge that we need to deal with mental health and create awareness more than we've been doing so this song is dedicated to everyone going through mental health situation. Although, yes, we are celebrating, but uh, this is a song of encouragement to everyone who is dealing with it or has lost someone to it or knows someone who is dealing with mental health situation. The pain you feel inside is real maybe you need to know why it hurts 
you hate the life you lead, it's fine. What makes you think you are alone? Cause I've been down a thousand times One thing I've been able to find The worst mistake is to stay down Get up, take a stance, be strong Reach out to those you love, seek for help Suicide is not the option, so please Hope it's for the ones who stay alive Cause I've been down a thousand times One thing I've been able to find The worst mistake is to stay down I could shelter Life is shelter Don't be despair There's a shelter At the end of the road Problems are to make you stronger Take a look closer You will see Tons of things To be grateful for Cause I've been down a thousand times One thing I have been able to find The worst mistake is to stay down Don't stay down, never you give up don't you stay down, don't stay down Whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah Don't stay down, never you give up Don't you stay down, don't stay down So I'd love to invite Jesse to assist me with this next song and it's a privilege to be playing with the program director of the program that taught you everything you know in music right now thank you so much it's my privilege everybody jesse jesse fan Many days has passed today The day I first said hello to you I said those things a boy would say I did those things a man will do To make you happy, to make you mine Cause there's nothing else that I could do I wish I could spend my life with you In this life and the next Oh hey, I know I belong In your arms where my journey will end 
Oh, someday I'll walk with you side by side To the place I will say I do Where I will say I Oh, I Oh, I Do you do Where I will say I There's a river in between us I can seem to cross it's the fear of the unknown Cause if I have my way If I have the strength I'll be by your side and go with the flow Cause I know I belong In your arms where my journey will end Oh, someday I'll walk with you side by side To the place I will say I do Where I will say I I do, oh, where I do Do you do Where I will say I Oh, I Oh, I do, do Someone who's told me fallen in love It's not an easy thing to do Of all the good things in this life Love is the greatest So I have one more song for you, and it's going to be a sing-along. It's a popular classic song. Cause it's, the, it's, a, it's a blue kind of month, so let's sing about an anticipation for the month of May. This song is titled My Girl. Cause I've got sunshine on the cloud of day. When it's cold outside, I've got a month of May. I get you say what can make me feel the Way, my girl, talking about my girl. I don't need no money, no fortune, no fame. I've got all the riches in the world that one man can claim. I've got so much honey and the bees and the leaves. I've got the sweetest song and the birds and the bees. Hey, 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 let's sing together. I guess you say what can you Make me feel this way, my 
about my girl. My girl. Talking about my girl. Again. My girl. Talking about my girl. One more time. Thank you so much. I don't know. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. My name is Kunle, and here on the cajon is Jesse. He's a multi instrumentalist as well. Yeah. I saw people swaying and tapping their feet to the musical stylings. So thank you, Dr. Fayen and Kunle for that. Sorry about this, guys. This is what happens when it's live. As we close, before we go, I just want to remind everyone about the photo booth. Please take your time. Go and take a few shots or so. You can boomerang. That's for the younger set. And also remember to make a note or two to your future selves or just in general on the wall so we can put it in our time capsule. And that's basically it. So we truly appreciate your presence. So thank you again, everyone, for those here at campus and those joining us online. We so appreciate you spending your time with us today as we mark this special occasion. So everybody, thank you. A round of applause for everybody here and all our performance and presentation. Get your commemorative comic and a few tokens as you go. And here's to 25 more great years. Good afternoon.